So here we have a simple circuit. It has two voltage sources. Uh, the first is this 20 volt DC source. And the second is this 30 volt uh, cosine or, or AC source. So it's a time varying source. And so they're asking us to consider this 800 ohm resistor and they wanna know what the AC component, so that would be the voltage drop uh, on this device from the uh, time varying source. And then they also want us to uh, determine the DC component of the voltage drop, and that would be what's coming from the uh, 20 volt source. And to do this, we're going to use superposition uh, to solve for these. So let's see how we do this. So first, we want to consider the uh, time varying source. So that's the source here, the 30 cosine source. So remember when we use superposition, uh, once we pick the source we're analyzing, we short out the other voltage sources. So if we were to do that here, it would be like we were removing this source altogether and then replacing it just with a short uh, or a line across there uh, like that. So when we look at that, <clears throat> uh, we can redraw this and maybe make it a little easier to, to, uh, to see. We have our AC source, so our voltage source here. And we're coming out into this 600 ohm resistor and then we have 400 ohm resistor in parallel with the 800 ohm resistor. So hopefully you can see that uh, just by looking at the original. But uh, just in case not, let's see if we can redraw that there and maybe make that a little easier to see. So now what we're ultimately trying to figure out um, is the current through this 800 amp uh, resistor. Because we have the current and we have the resistance by Ohm's law, uh, V equals IR then we can determine the voltage drop across there. But to do that, we first have to figure out what the total current from the source is. And to do that, we need to find out the equivalent resistance. So REQ, and we'll say this is for source one, that's gonna be equal to 600 ohms. That's our first uh, resistor. And then that's in series with 400 ohm in parallel with 800 ohm. So if we rewrite that, that'll be 600 plus 400 times 800 over 400 plus 800. And so when we finally write that, we get 866.67 ohms. So using that, we can determine what the total source is, total current is from our source. So to do that then, we'll call this I total from the first source. Uh, that's just Ohm's law, right? So that's, uh, we solve for current in Ohm's law, it's V over R. So in this case, that'll be one over 866.67, that's our resistance. And that's going to be times our voltage, which is 30 cosine pi t um, volts. And when we calculate that out, um, we should come up with 0 0.034615. That's again cosine, oops, cosine of pi t, 200 pi t, excuse me. Um, actually, I should fix that up here too. So it's cosine of 200 pi t. And then that, again, that's going to be equal to 0 0.034. 615 cosine of 200 pi t. And so this is our current from the source. 
Now we see once we get to this point here, uh, the current can either go this way, which is the one we want to know, or it can go this way. So that's a current divider. So now we can determine what the current is, and it's going to be a function of T, of our 800 amp ohm, 800 ohm resistor. And again, this is from the first source by using current division. So here we'll have 0 0.0. 34615 uh, cosine of 200 pi t, and that's going to be times. Remember, current division, we take the, res the path, uh, the other path that we're not interested in, put it on top, and then the sum of the, both the paths on the bottom, so it's 400 plus 800. And so when we calculate that out, that comes to 0 0.0115205 cosine 200 pi t. So this is the current through our uh, resistor. So now if we want voltage, remember Ohm's law, V equals IR. So then that's just going to be 800 times our 0 0.0115 205 cosine 200 pi t and when we multiply that out um, we should come up with 9.231 cosine 200 pi t volts so this is the voltage across the 800 amp, 800 ohm resistor from our AC source. So this is our AC component, first thing they asked for. So now we need to go back and reconsider our circuit. So let's start over. We'll erase all of this. And go back to our original circuit and now we want to consider the DC source so that'll be this source here so when we do that again we should we short out the other source so that means in a sense uh, we just take it away and then we put a short across there like so so now this one's a little easier to see. Now we have 400 ohm uh, resistor, and then the six and the 800 are in parallel. So we could do the same type thing um, as we did before, find the equivalent resistance. So then REQ from the second source, that's gonna be a 400 ohm plus 600 in parallel with 800. And so that'll be 400 plus 600 times 800 over 600 plus 800. And so when we work that out, uh, that should come to 742.857 ohms. All right, so now we can calculate the total current coming out of the source. So that's going to be I. So in this case, I we'll call it total from the second source. That's gonna be our, again, voltage over our resistance, right? So that's going to be 20 over 742.857. And so when we calculate that, uh, we should come up with uh, 742. 0.857, that should equal to 0 0.026923 amps. And so that's our total current. Again, we can do current division. So once that current gets to this point here, some will go this way, some will go this way. Of course, this is the one we're interested in. So in this case, then, our I through our 800 from the second source... That is going to be 0 0.026923 uh, 
times, remember we take the path we're not interested in on the top, so that's 600 over 600 plus 800. And when we work that out, uh, we should come up with 0 0.01537. Amps, and so now finally our voltage across our 800 amp uh, resistor from the second source. That's just going to be our resistance, which is 800 times our current, which is 0 0.01537. We multiply that out, and we should get 9.23 volts. So this would be what we would call our DC. Uh, component, which was the second thing they asked for. So incidentally, the voltage drop across that, the total voltage drop would be the sum of these two. So it would be, um, it would be this plus this. And so what that does then is uh, that creates a sine wave. So the first one gives us our sine, our cosine wave, but the voltage offset just shifts it. So you know, if we had the original uh, cosine coming here, which is from our AC component, once we have the DC component, it shifts everything up so that it's actually going to be up here somewhere, cosine. So anyway, that's the way we solve for the AC and the DC component uh, using superposition.